Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, doing another movie review this week, um, in the month of October. I just previously reviewed The Witches of Eastwick, and regarding to that, I forgot to mention that the witches themselves were actually very good, heartfelt, kinded witches, that um, I don't think they hardly ever cast any spells, except for the fact that they've been hearing some gossips. But you actually care for them, though, too. I mean, the devil, on the other hand, that's another story, yeah, which is the mysterious man. Um, but I always loved the film, even though it did scare the hell out of me as a kid. But as years follow, I grew out of it, and it still looks impressive to its day. So it may have a little bit of issues, but that's okay. Um, I still give it five stars, and, and I love the performances of the cast, including Cher, Susan Sarandon, Michelle Pfeiffer and Jack Nicholson. So perfect. Uh, so now I'm going to review another movie that also involves witchcraft, and it's basically a 17th century period piece that's a supernatural horror drama called simply The Witch. It's an A24 film, though it was released internationally by Universal. <laughs> um, which, yes, their theme is um, evil takes many forms, as you can hardly see it on to the Blu-ray case. And it has the picture of a black Philip, it's a black goat. Yeah, it's a New England folktale following the story of a Christian Puritan family who just encounters the forces of evil in the neck of the woods living in a New England farm town at their home and you know, going around farming and, and doing what they can and you know, building crops and, and all that that kind of story and this is the feature film debut of writer and director Robert Eggers who at the time he was doing mostly uh, theater arts for several short films and other uh, plays that he was doing so and then we got Anna Taylor Joy, and this was, I believe, her first film because she went on to spot a career with films like Splits, yeah, the M. Light Shyamalan film, which has turned out to be a sequel to, at this rate, the trilogy of, of Unbreakable, uh, which had, of course, um, James McAvoy is playing a guy with split personalities. Um, and then um, it follows the, the third and final installment, which is Glass, Disappointment, by the way. And then she went on to do films like uh, Emma, the, the new version of Emma. And she's now going to be in her upcoming Netflix film. And I'll definitely will check that out and see how this goes. But... She's a very talented actress, good to hear. Um, and yep, it, it got critically praised upon its release, got a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, that's good to hear. And when I saw the movie uh, back in 2016, because it premiered, it actually became surprisingly a hit, um, earning $40 million out of its $4 million budget. And um, not only that, but it did premiere it at the Sundance Film Festival in 2015. So it's perfect. And yeah, you can see right here in the back, um, has features, of course. Um, I'm not going to open the case, so I'm just going to keep it that way. Uh, which is, it's very interesting for a film to be made in modern times. I mean, mostly because, you know, we're living in times where we're getting so many horror films, good or bad, but that depends on what we found. I mean, most of the times it's it's just, sometimes it could be a good film, in case we end up finding some, but then other times we end up getting some really bad ones, like most of the ones that Blumhouse has been producing. Um, but this one was going for an authentic look, 
going for that particular period piece, trying to become more accurate as possible, focusing on the Salem Witch Trials. I, I'm pretty much into this um, particular story here because, you know, I, I had watched some Salem Witch Trials types of films, and, and I think I've, when I was taking that uh, uh, middle school class, uh, yeah, when I was in middle school uh, in Oregon, I heard they were doing a story, they were actually focusing on the story of the Salem Witch Trials and all this other stuff that was happening from this time period where, where witches and witchcraft themselves actually exist, even if it isn't in fairy tale times. And this was, of course, uh, used as, as a term, elevate horror, because they're trying to focus on the psychological conflict of independence, sexuality, acceptance, and power for Christian beliefs here, of which of course focus on the female character, the main one, uh, Thomason. And we also led to believe that Satan actually speaks, and and then we begin to find out about how witchcraft can translate in in evil forms. And yes, they can be stripped naked. Uh, they can transform from either an old woman to a younger woman and all. And I know I spotted the, the scenes here with, with an, a mysterious woman with a red cape, like you're thinking Little Red Riding Hood in a way. And I think this would definitely um, set to this particular period. And that's what I can really uh, believe here. Anyway, let, let's review the film. It stars Anna Taylor-Joy, Ralph Endelson, Kate Dickey, Harvey Shimshaw, Ellie Granger, Lucas Dawson, Julian Richings, Bathsheba Garnett, Sarah Stevens, Charlie, Bahab Chandre, Atun Henry Dube, and Afon Conrad Dube. And it's written and directed by Robert Eggers, who just had his uh, recent film called The Lighthouse, which features, yeah, Twilight star, British actor, who was immensely overrated, Robert Pattinson. I'm not the biggest fan of him, but he's joined in with um, an extraordinary actor, as we all know, uh, William Defoe. Um, which is also a period piece too. So I've yet to check it out. The movie began set in 17th century New England. We meet the Puritan English settlers, uh, William, who's played by Ralph Endelson, joined by his family, starting with his wife Catherine, played by Kate Dickey, their daughter Thomason, older, played by Anna Taylor Joy. Their son Caleb, played by Harvey Shimshaw, and their fractional twins, Mercy and Jonas, a yeah, boy and a girl, played by Ellie Granger and Lucas Dawson. They are being banished from a Puritan Plymouth colony, mostly because of a religious dispute that was happening. So then the entire family have built a farm somewhere in the secretive forest which then Catherine had bared a, a fifth child which was Samuel a baby which uh, they're just building some crops you know they brought in some other animals like the goats such as the black Philip and the, the white goat they do what they can to survive and all until so one day, Thomason, who just already, you know, believe in God and, and heaven and hoping things will, will be safe for the family, um, she was playing peekaboo with Samuel until all of a sudden he disappears. It would soon that a mysterious witch wearing a red cape, almost starting to resemble Little Red Riding Hood or, or so, 
had been stolen. Um, Samuro was was unbaptized, and as as far as we is concerned here, she actually killed him and using his remains to make a flying ointment. Catherine, feeling very devastated by the disappearance of Samuro, had started crying, sobbing, and praying that hopefully Samuro will be found. So, during hunting season, uh, William joins with his son, Caleb, by questioning the, the disappearance of Samuro, that hopefully that his soul will reach to heaven if that was the case. Um, they're going around hunting a jackrabbit for food. They set up a trap. Um, Woody was ready to shoot with his gun, but then it suddenly went off and actually blew his face. But luckily he was okay. So I'm already, you know, they're just working, you know, doing some more farming, some cleaning and all. While well, Thomason was just telling a, a very dark, spooky story about witch, about the witches, you know, casting spells and all, just you know, just going around, you know, scaring the twins and you know, just playing around, that sort of thing. But then, of course, Caleb was very shocked and appalled about how telling all these horrible stories. How did he knew about all that? Well, yeah. <laughs> Um, later on, William had revealed to Caleb that he traded Catherine's silver cup for hunting supplies, and by that night, Catherine had had um, somehow accused Thomason for stealing the silver cup, only to be revealed by William, because he had to spill the beans, that he actually sold it. Um, because Catherine thought that maybe she, Thompson took it, but she never did. She never had once touched it. She knew that it was in the cupboard the whole time. It happened uh, during the dinner. Uh, therefore, by when they were sleeping at night, uh, Caleb suddenly uh, went out. Well, uh, Thomason follows him. Yeah, already Caleb was just feeding the, the horse. And hoping by midday he's going to try to find out about uh, the trap that they set up, you know, just so they can chase down the jackrabbit for food. Um, but Thomason threatened him that he'll tell their mother and father that, that he's going to get into bigger trouble. And also trying to suspect about the disappearance of Samuel. As they continue during that morning, you know, Caleb already preparing for his gun just to find the, the jackrabbit. And while well, Thompson is riding the horse, joining in with their dog, Fowler, so they can chase after it. Um, somehow, some way, they found the jackrabbit and then. They're trying to chase after it. Uh, Thompson tries to go after him, and then she fell off her horse. She was not unconscious until she woke up and found out that Caleb was missing, along with Fowler. Caleb soon found out that Fowler has been trapped, was already caught, and then soon he begins to spot this mysterious witch. Very young, a very young woman. And that's where he got casted by the spell. So that's what led to the disappearance. And then the following day, or the following night, now he's already been stripped naked. And already feeling uh, very feverish. Yeah, during the war, uh, during its rain, rainy uh, night. They try to find a way to actually uh, help him, because now, since I think he's been casted, though they had to, they had to use a knife, cut, cut the temple, and the blood starts to come out in a rush. 
hoping he'll be alright by the next morning. Like he'll recover from what just happened. So I was told that yes, he was being casted by by evil from that witch. We also learned that um, even uh, during this particular morning, you know, just continue with farming, you know, you know, begin, you know, trying to get some goat's milk. Somehow the goats have been casted, and somehow the goat is actually um, getting pretty much the blood instead of uh, white milk. So she was very shocked to see that, and, and then the twins themselves were thinking that Thompson might be the witch. Soon gets worse too when when they went all the way up to um, the attic, hoping that they'll try to help uh, Caleb out. But then we begin to find out that yes, Caleb has been casted under the spell of a witch, saying all these um, particular frightening uh, words that they were very shocked and then now he was dead um, even the twins were sort of casted although maybe they're just playing around but I think they really were casted and then they accuse uh, Thomason to be the one responsible for that but he knows that he did nothing wrong I mean he didn't do anything to Caleb but other than the fact that there was the one truth that he swore not to tell them was that Caleb was going hunting that day. But it only gets much worse from there when sooner or later that's where William somehow uh, just took both um, Thomason and the, the twins, you know, Mercy and Jonas, inside the, the shed you know, where all the goats are, and, and the Black Phillip is right there. I have to lock him inside until William finds out the truth. And then, at night, that's where something mysterious is about to happen. I mean, this particular power that was hitting... Because now, um, the Black Phillip actually controls uh, already... The, the twins that spotted it, and so was uh, Thomason. And now we begin to find out about what's going on with Catherine, because she was very surprised to find out that Caleb and, and Samuel were found, and they were okay, since now they, after they just buried uh, Caleb, but well, it turns out that it was just part of uh, a magical spell that the witch has done, and which at that rate turns out to be a crow and attacks um, her nipple almost like feeding the, just like how he feeds um, her child, the uh, samurai and then suddenly William is being uh, already praying that uh, earlier though that he was praying that hoping to bless the children and the family they're going to be safe from this evil spell that it only gets worse from there when all of a sudden the Black Phillip goes completely nuts and starts attacking William and kills him and then next Catherine has been cast and was ready to attack Thomason until Thomason you know, takes out the knife and starts uh, killing uh, Catherine so now she's all alone. And I'm assuming that the twins were killed by the witch. Yeah, as you may already saw her in her older self. Yeah, she transforms from her younger self and all. From one of her spells. And also she was stripped naked too. Yeah. Yeah, they, they go for a lot of, of disturbing results right here. So she's all alone. She had to take off, well, she was already covered in blood. She tries to take off the, the dress. And then soon by night, she begins to spot uh, the Black Phillip. And this is where, yeah, and this is the biggest twist of them all. 
the more revealing twist was that the Black Phillip um, was under disguise. It was actually a man underneath it all. And so he, she, Thompson had to sign her name. She had to strip off her clothes, running around naked. And that's where she went all the way down to the coven. Because she has to join, you know, just to find some peace and love and all. And that's where you spotted all these witches who are just um, performing their, their rituals. And now they're actually floating and levitating all the way up into the sky and she joins with them. And that's how the film ends this way. Um, very dark, chilling folk tale right there. Um, and I think it's as accurate as it could be. You know, based on the the old story from from Salem, Massachusetts, um, the performances were terrific. Um, not a bad performance at all. It didn't feel phony. It didn't feel um, campy, cheesy, or any types. It almost felt pretty much well real. But I know it's not exactly you know too real in a way. They just did what they can to maintain the, the story just to note that they were actually are spoken sort of like like a poem in a way I mean this is how how early modern English has spoke so you probably wouldn't understand some of the words that they're saying but so I recommend that if you had to like use the subtitles on your Blu-ray you'll be able to understand what they're saying too it's also very quiet at times too, like there's no jump scares hitting around that's often doing in, in modern horror films these days. Uh, it, it can't be unsettling uh, during maybe in the climax, or, or almost towards the climax, when the Black Phillip appears out of nowhere and starts attacking. Um, and I know it's hard too because sometimes you're afraid that something might pop up. I mean, that was the case here. Um, uh, the music was uh, done by Mark uh, Colvin, so it created that very haunting score right here. Very chilling. It definitely has that that period piece right here. Um, cinematography looks uh, very. Um, Superb! It has that dark, shallow feel right there, you know, with the grayish tones. It was actually shot uh, at 1.66, almost pretty much uh, full frame, uh, matted uh, widescreen right there too. Um, now I I was also aware here that Robert Eggers, because um, he wrote and directed this, and he did an amazing job uh, trying to to maintain the story as as accurate as possible because um, I know he had to do his own research about this um, about how in that those times you know they actually had done all this uh, particular uh, power and, and their beliefs and all for witchcraft um, was that they, he wanted the film to be set exactly as it was told in New England somewhere in Massachusetts and all, but because of the taxes that was happening at the time, um, they had to shoot it in Canada, Hope, but he was trying his um, his ways to actually find the film to be said exactly that's closer to what the story was told, you know, focusing on the agricultures and, and those situations around. I know it's exactly as obscured as it could be, and I know it could be as strange, and how dark, and how how disturbing it is too. Yes, I mean, and how graphic the nudity was in the film that was depicted. I think that was more effective that way. Linda Mirror, who's the costume designer, um, actually um, 
took the, the 35 books, um, Close of the Common People and Elizabethan and early Stuart England, um, all set up to actually um, use all the period uh, clothing for the rest of, of the family to make them look exactly how they're supposed to be. Um, even in the beginning of the film, the way they were all dressed, exactly how Puritans County should work. There's also some I Indians uh, at the beginning too, just before they were set sail. This was of course almost at the time too, you know, with Plymouth Rock and you know all the, um, the pilgrims and everyone had to try to find land to, to live and trying to help um, all the families and everyone who were been sick and hoping that the Indians would guide them to help them out, even though some of the Indians had vanished, mostly from a plague, they may have had killed, so maybe only half of them they survived. Yeah, that story. Um, and concerning its small budget, though, I think they really uh, appreciate all the hard work that they had to do. Um, it's done practically too. They had to build all the set designs and, and the pieces. Every, all the, they had to build all these uh, farmhouses and everything. They, you know, they, they studied all of that from the, from all the drawings that they, that they actually shown here. They had to try to match exactly how this was set. So this looks more realistic than ever before. It feels real. And yeah, this story does can scare people too. Um, I'm even surprised uh, even Stephen King actually saw the film himself and he felt very terrified. <laughs> Again, it, it's not for everybody if you're not really into this stuff, but that's okay. Um, but for this particular uh, elevating horror right here, this, this actually um, it does make you feel unsettling to, to watch. It's tougher for, for any viewer, but once you get into it, I think you'll be able to appreciate it. I mean, it's an artsy horror film from this company, A24. So, I know it's kind of tough for modern viewers out there, especially for those who are horror fans out there. Once you get used to it, I think you'll be able to appreciate it. Even for film buffs out there. <laughs> Anyway, that's The Witch, and I give the movie five stars. Why not? Because I I figured this is truly my favorite film from Robert Eggers, and I still hold to my regard that, that this is his best work. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.